Daniel. Good How to see you. you. Good to it's see great. you. Good to see you. Blinding light. Blinding light, but it's good to see yeah. you. Good to be in Tucson. How's things? It's Tucson. What can you say? There's lots we're of here. beautiful minerals. Yeah, welcome. Yeah, we're Let here, me... and it's and this is the first installment of what's hot this year. So Excellent. Good oh, stuff. you guys haven't filmed yet at all? No, this is this is the. Well, first one out to shoot. I'm honored. Wonderful. Well, let me show you around. Have a look. All right. Oh, good stuff. So we're in the back gallery of the, the house here on Granada. And this used to be where we would do our Keystone display. And last year, as you know, was the first year we transformed it and made it all just the same level as the whole house. So mm -hmm. it was a, a way to share more minerals in a less crowded space so people could really see everything mm -hmm. individually. And you'll recognize some cute things in here, some Mexican minerals over here, this couple. Nice, nice Azurite, nice Guerrero, and the color on that appetite is... Yeah, it's very unusual. The appetites from Afghanistan have, and we'll see one later on that I'll show you as a, an individual one that we can hold in our hand. But there's only been a handful of these, maybe four or five examples that I've seen that have this just cherry red color. It's just crazy. And so that's one really great one. And I have another one that I'll show you later. So you've fun. got, you've got my got appetite you. stimulator. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> I've wet your appetite. That's a fluorite? Yeah, it's a fluorite. Isn't that wow, great? It's a huge twin with amazing pink to green colors on it. Mm-hmm. Mm, looks like Nika on steroids. Yeah, that's <clears> true. <throat> Nika produces some beautiful ones, though. Beautiful twins. Doesn't twins. get pink like that, but nice twins. Oh, they don't come pink from there? No. Huh. Interesting. Just about every other color you can think of. I love this smoky quartz because it's got the little tiny baby crystals all around it, mm -hmm. and it has the one dominant in with the white matrix. So... For a Swiss one, that's a great, great object. Great focus crystal, right? Yeah. That'll sort of the definition of what of exactly. you look for. I should sell it to James Webb for the focal crystal. So there you go. There you go. That's yeah. the focal crystal. That's the one on that piece. And then we can go this way. We've got a half dozen showcases in this room with mm. all of Lawrence Stoller's beautiful pieces and his beautiful quartz carvings. All and adopted already. Yeah, and adopted already. This little citrine's been adopted. Mm -hmm. The high priestess. The high priestess. I love it. It has super rich color, that. Yeah, it does have great actually. color. For citrine. Mm -hmm. And then over here, we have some of our larger specimens that we have on pedestals. This is a great calcite and amethyst from Uruguay. Mm -hmm. It looks like a rocket. And this is a halite from the Hartz Mountains in, in Germany That's with really bizarre gypsums. Habit. Oh, with okay. That's so it's say. gypsums and then the halites halite. are in the okay. center. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. And this is a nice dry climate for it. Perfect climate for it, mm -hmm. exactly. Castles in the sand. Little malachite Very there. Nice emerald sitting there. Yeah. Glowing nicely. Yeah, emeralds have become impossible to get. Great emeralds mm -hmm. from Colombia on Matrix. They're super hard to find. So any fine emerald. And you'll notice there's a bunch of great Bornanites around. I think I have one, two, there's three on display. Yagangshan. All Yagangshan, mm -hmm. yeah. I saw several of those in um, Zhengzhou in, in 2019. So yeah. There was a, are they sort of... A, they're that fine, trickling, that trickling, fine way trickling home. out, yeah. yeah. This is worthwhile to see. This is fantastic. This is fluorite from Arango, and it's the alien eye variety. And I mean, right. just the intensity of the color right. is just truly remarkable. Yeah, outstanding. Mm -hmm. And for that size, I mean, it's like 20 inches across almost. Mm -hmm. This was the other born night that I was mentioning. Ooh. It's nice because it has a combination with the fluorites on top, and, yeah, the top and yeah. the quartz. It's really That's an good. amazing deposit. Yeah, Yaogan Shan is one of my favorite. Purple on that. Mineral Gobis, localities. Gobis, Gobobiseb is pretty good too. Yeah, that's for amethyst good. for Gobobiseb, that's great. Monster dioptase. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the cases are full. We've, we've really, we've enjoyed sharing more finer quality things than what we used to do here. And it's gotten great 
response from people. So it's, it's mm -hmm. fun. Love this fluorite from Inner Mongolia, the purple octahedrons, so unusual. Massive fluorite from Elmwood. Mm-hmm. Most Lamentos hiding in the corner. Hiding in the corner. <clears throat> Great Gwindel from oh, Switzerland yeah. on Matrix. Great twist on that. Yeah, it's got a wonderful twist. And this is super fun for Huang Gong. It's actually fluorite, but it's been pseudomorphed by quartz. Hmm. So it's quartz. Hmm. On quartz. On quartz. Yeah. Okay. How do you do that? I'm not sure how they do uh, that. Um, that's chemically, there's not a whole lot in common between quartz and fluorite. Not really, <laughs> no. So yeah, that, there was a small pocket of these, only about a handful of them. And I saw this was the best one I was able to mm -hmm. find. Great vanadinite up in the top, with huge crystals. Some wonderful stuff. Mm -hmm. As usual. Thank you. And we can go down this way, deeper into the house, which has now become sort of the front of the house again. So it used to be when the hotel had the show going on, everybody was coming in from the back. But before that, people would come in the front before I had the back of the house, and now it's swip swapped again, and everybody's coming in from the front. Mm -hmm. so. Who knows? Here we've got live footage of, or you know, documentation of the King of Kashmir yep. being collected and cut out and the sawing. It's a great video that shows really what it was like. That was a remarkable discovery. And there it is right when it came down. Mm -hmm. Super fun, Marco Lorenzoni. Did an amazing job with his team. Oh. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> that is so cool. And then they had to lower it down the cliff. Face. Yeah, and then they brought it down. And we go this way. We've got a couple of big guys over there. That big Malchan tourmaline is incredible. It's got a lot of drama. Tourmalines from Russia have just gotten really impressive. There have been some crazy tourmalines from several places in the last couple of years. Yeah. Some Brazilian some ones. Brazilian seen, ones. Some Brazilian ones. Amazing things out of Afghanistan. Yep. Oh. Yeah. There's been more and more. I think what's happening is people are realizing the value of these objects and also that they need to take the time to preserve them. Mm -hmm. And the combination of that in the last, I, I think, five years is really starting to resonate. Combined with social media, access, information, and the access to the right tools, we're seeing better quality minerals mm -hmm. and more of them. So here's a fun tourmaline that we have. This is from the Cruzeiro area in Brazil. And then another fun another. amethyst calcite. Those things just keep getting better and better. Which ones, the amethyst calcite? Amethyst. Yeah, look at yes. this one. This <laughs> one we call the, the sconce. And I mean, this is you can get an idea of the size. I mean, it's, it's easy, 25 inches tall. Mm. And just so many different generations. This whole thing is just sticking out, floating off of an arm, and you've got the one calcite here and then the other calcite there with the multiple generations of growth of calcite, then amethyst, and calcite, then amethyst. It's super fun. Mm -hmm. A lot going on. Yeah. Good story, Rock. Yeah, for sure. And then we have all of our little miniatures. Mm -hmm which are always wildly popular with collectors. There's another emerald. You said they were hard to get. They are hard to get, <laughs> but that's what I try to do is get all the things that are hard to get. <laughs> that's my job. Very cute little diopside from Marilani on graphite. Mm -hmm. Also harder to get. <laughs> and this is cool. I don't, you've probably seen these, but this is a garnet from Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. There's been a, a number of those come out, and it, I'd never seen them before. Were they? They've come out off and on. Over the years? Over, over the years, yeah. I have two or three very old ones, and then uh, some beautiful, almost grass green ones came out. Really? Came out in the early 90s. Wow. Um, and then there was a batch, let's say four or five years ago. Yeah. That's greener than, the, than that particular batch, so I don't know which one, which find that's from. This came and, out. And, and some of them are hollow. Hollow. Yeah. Some of them actually, the earlier stages of garnets were out of equilibrium with the late fluids. And so that stage 
for some reason is selectively eroded. And huh. so you wind up with a shell, a very nicely crystallized garnet. Right. With a complete void within the... You know, it's, so it's, just it's, the outside, it's, almost like it's, a cast. It's, it's, not a, it's not complete, but there's a hole in it. Okay. But it's basically just a shell of garnet with the earlier stages gone. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, and I had never known that they had come from there, from Las Vegas. There's all kinds of weird stuff coming from there. They're actually digging some pegmatites in that neighborhood these days, and they're getting some pretty good smokies on orthoclase with all kinds wow. of zeolites on top of them. Some really nice orange stellarite showing up on some of them. Wow, that's so cool. I'm looking forward to seeing some of that material. Here we have more beautiful more minerals. More knockout rocks. Yeah, we have that really cool erythrite on top. Look like purple fuzz balls for the species. That's super fun. Yep. Huge tetrahedrite. That is a monster. And I love this fan of vanadinite. Mm hmm So delicate. And it's just like, just, it's totally, it's like one crystal that's been stretched uh, as far as you could stretch it's a crystal. You're like a feather. Exactly. Yeah. Looks like a feather. It's great. You even have a feldspar. I even have a feldspar. Yeah. From Morongo. From Morongo. Mm hmm Yeah, it just has a great aesthetic and yeah. it has I just nice twin. I love the nice composition. Color. Great composition, yeah. Yeah. Feldspar is underappreciated. It is. It's a mineral that is underappreciated. Most people just think of it as matrix. Most like. That's one of the exceptions. Mm hmm Pyrite. Another just <laughs> Serious eye candy, as always. I like this. This Bornanite was the other one that I was mentioning. This is great. Mm -hmm. Just nestled in the quartz. And then I also love that. that. That's so fun. The geometry of the central part of the calcite that's been covered by the snow white quartz. And it's just got that right sparkle. This is a super fun thing. And that's, of course, carved out of a monster... Yeah, Geode. I don't know. You know what? Most of the time when I get them, they've already done most of the work. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know how it started. I don't know if it was a geode 200 kilos or if it was a small one, but it, it had to be obviously bigger than that. And, you know, based on how flat the back is, I'm going to guess that it was pretty grand. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, for sure. And then we can go in here. And I used to call this like the vault room, which it still is, but the level of quality that we're displaying throughout the house is pretty even keel. So most of the displays are gonna have the same level of minerals. So the, the quality of the minerals in the showcases is consistent now so that the, you get a, a good feel about when you walk through the house. It's not like this is a steep change. And so you can just see beautiful objects everywhere. A lot of people love this mango quartz mm -hmm. because of the, you know, the aesthetics of it are just so unique. It's almost a stick figure. Yeah. Or like a pinwheel or a star or something mm -hmm. like that. And good old classic Pedinera from Chiago's Pocket. Mm -hmm. That was one of the great examples from that discovery. A Hedenbergite. That's, as a scarring geologist, I love that. You love that. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't mean I don't like the others and probably would take the others first, but that's a hell of a Hedenbergite. Yeah, that's a great Hedenbergite. It's super fun. And well crystallized for there. Yes. And then this you'll appreciate, Milpilis. That's a yep. gorgeous Nice Milpilis. electric blue mm -hmm. from there. You've got and several of them. That's not Burbase. I actually learned that uh, from another dealer that it's a different area in Spain. Um, but that turquoise color is very unique. So that's one of my favorite colors for fluorites. You don't see it often. And that's a Vivianite in the back from Romania, which is fantastic. And just so you don't get too overwhelmed by Milpias, you've got a lovely monster azurite here from Morocco. Morocco. Yeah. So. Almost, almost holds its own against... Almost, the, uh, almost. I'll still give Milpias its, its accreditation. It's, I think, I mean, would you that say... Electric, it's, that electric blue is hard, to, hard beat. to beat. You just, it's hard the, to beat. The luster on the electric blue when you get them is just... Yeah. I agree. There's a handful of Sumeb azurites that are incredible, and there's a handful of, you know, Bisbees. But for me, I think overall, after the top 
5% of those two locations, the next location that just dominates is Milpila. For the, quali- for the quantity of high quality, you just yeah, can't touch it. You can't touch it. We agree. So, And then there's some lovely things over here. we got a really cool Torbernite, an Iranian Wolfenite. Mm, that's remarkably orange from there. I'm used to seeing them much redder than that. Mm-hmm. It's a lovely color. It's almost reminiscent of San Francisco or... Yeah, very or, much. Or even Rowley. It's got just enough orange to be in that realm. And that calcite flower is a lovely thing. That's wonderful. I love that. It's just got a great aesthetic. And it's like the, the, sh- the shell grew around the flower just to protect it. I almost thought of trimming that part off just to expose the flower, but I, I like the composition of the, the two by each other. So it gives you that negative space to appreciate. And then over here, this is really cool because everybody looks at it and goes, oh, Jackson's Crossroads. And then they go, no, it's Tignal, which is in Georgia as well. And it's from an older find. It was found by a couple in the 70s and they found one pocket of incredible quality and they kept the whole thing. And they never sold any of it. And they did a, a write-up on it. Either in, It was either in Rocks and Minerals or Lapidary Journal. And they have pictures of this couple. And they were out, like, digging just for themselves, like, on, like, a weekend dig. And mm-hmm. they found this one pocket. And they have, like, some pictures of the pieces on the ground, all imprinted in black and white. And that sat with these collectors for, like, you know, 30 years. And finally, they had passed away. It passed on to their kids. And then they sold the whole group. And then I got that from a, a, another dealer mm-hmm. who acquired them. Um, and this was the best example. There was a big one in the back on the pedestal that we didn't go mm-hmm. and look at, but those were the two main examples mm-hmm. from there. But for, you know, another location to produce that color and luster in Georgia in is Georgia, pretty, yeah. pretty interesting. It says something about amethyst for, from Georgia. Mm-hmm. So yeah. there you go. And those are the showcases and the displays. And now I can show you some things from the vault. <laughs> So we can... Um, Some places you might say, now we get to the good stuff. Now we could say, now we get to the good stuff. So, I mean, I have, I have all different types of things going on in here. So these are some of the new malachites on quartz from Congo. And these are just super cool for the combo of the contrast. And I really like this example. Oh, yeah. The white. The white green. with the green. And it just has such a great sparkle and the isolated spheres. So that's super fun. One piece. This is an incredible cassiterite. It's just got super form, luster, and this is from Ping Wu with the little, little clear barrels. Goshenites underneath Goshenites, there. Yeah. This is a beautiful piece. It is indeed. This pyrite, I actually forget where it's from. I think it's Italian. And what I like about it is this stretched, warped. I think it's from an old Italian collection. Beautifully distorted. Yeah. Cute, so. Super fun. Oh, yeah. This is this is one of my favorite pieces this year. This is maybe the best vanadinite that I've had in God knows, I don't know, more than a decade, and it just has a very unique color. It's a more orange color, and the luster and the isolation. I mean, it's the they look like, spectacular. It's spectacular, and it's just a plate. A barite, it's all crystallized on the backside too. So I'm gonna guess the, the miners who found this just like stuck their hand yeah. in and, <laughs> and went like this and went, oh, oh this will pay for dinner. Uh, there you go. <laughs> so that is a fabulous example. Mm-hmm. It's just a stunning Vanna. You know, not a lot of Vanadenites get me excited because we've seen so many, but this is one of those outliers. But they, the, that locality or anything, that. All those vanadinites, they're just so spectacular. And yes, you get jaded because you've seen so many. But, yeah. you know, f- for those of us who were around before things like this were coming out of there, that this is just, it has con- it reset the bar it, and continues to reset It continues to reset the bar. But you know what? For every 100 or 200 pieces that you see, you, don't, you almost don't even see one of these. Right. It's, it's probably it's a worse one. ratio than that. Yeah, it is. It's, it's a way worse we're ratio. 20,000. Yeah. It's like that. So that's one of my favorites this year. Oh, this is a cool flat. Um, I'm going to get armed with flashlights. So this is, um, in case I want to show something, this is really fun. This is a pegmatitic rhodochrosite. Oh, I was going to say rhodonite from the shape, but rhodochrosite. Yeah. 
So it has the same um, crystal shape and habit as the ones from uh, Mount St. Hilaire. Mount St. Hilaire, yeah. Yeah. But much better color. Much better color and transparency. It's got a little bit of shoral mm -hmm. and a little bit of Clevelandite there and a little quartz. So it, it definitely gives you that pegmatite feel. And that's uh, Pakistani. Mm. It's super fun. And then this is a little jewel of a Malhan tourmaline. Well, the purple on the tip on that is... We get, yeah. We get the light on that. And sure. We can make that pop. Absolutely, and it's nice because it's not repaired, which you know a lot of these things, unfortunately, they suffer when they come out. So to have one that has no repairs, this is great. This was in uh, Gabrielle Reese's collection. They don't just suffer when they come out. Then there's a lot of natural pocket damage and oh yeah, magnetite pockets. So Absolutely, it's, yeah. It's a, it is exceptional to get a good piece that's naturally. Complete. And I love this little floor. The zoning is beautiful. Yeah. Just the isolation on the white mm -hmm. and with the zoning. It's just super fun. And that's Yagon Shan or where? No, you know, this is from, it, it's from Ohio. It's Ohio. No, it's not Ohio. <laughs> I, I do have a Clay Center coming up though that you'll like, but um, it's, um, I think it's from, um, oh God, it's another location. I think it's Fujian. Uh -huh. in China as well. Uh, let's see, this is cool because you've seen probably lots of these. And, but what I love about this one is that it's something that you can oh. handle. <clears throat> and when I say it's something that you can handle, it's one that you can take in your hand easily without sweating because the matrix is it's just right in the center on the scolocyte. I mean, on the still bite. Mm. So the setup on that is gorgeous. It's just and fantastic. The fact, and the fact that it's not just a puff ball. I mean, I love the puff balls, but right. to get one on, on a base like that is. Does that look well on camera? Yeah, it yeah. gives you that fiber optic effect. That yeah, you exactly. Get, you can get crystals. And it just makes it so easy to, that's what always stresses me out because holding these things, you're just like, oh my God. And it's like, you know, you're, you're always like, you know, how am I going to, this one, it just, it's like, it, it has its own built-in handle. Yeah. So it's, it's great. Yeah. Mm. Classic Aqua from Medina. What's well, got one of your stands that you were yeah. telling us about a couple of years ago, how you're. Yes. Building those to go on the base so they... Yeah, these are great because what it allows you to do is to not hide the, the bottom of... Because this is all doubly terminated and it's all crystallized. And so if you put this into the, the lucite, like some of the ones that we have done, like that fluoride on the top there, you lose a little bit of part of the crystal and it makes it look squat or whatever. But that's okay on the fluoride because it's, that's the matrix. Mm -hmm. But this is the complete crystal. So by doing it like this you know, in creating these clutch mounts, you know, you're able to allow it to display in a way that you see the whole crystal and the bottom without it being an obstruction. And so it's this delicate balance of finding a way to hold it securely, keep it in the position you want and have it stable and not, you know, difficult to manage. And mm -hmm. so that's what our, our mount team is doing and they are so gifted. I mean, they, they do some amazing stuff. You'll see some of the other stuff that they've done is really impressive coming up. Well, you give them some pretty nice stuff to work with. I do. I give them some great raw materials, but their, their skills are, they're next level. They can, they can do some beautiful things. But this was uh, the one thing. of the great ones from the Garnet Pocket. Mm -hmm. Again, you can see this is really cool, what the extent they go through. So this is a clutch mount that's been made, but this part has an Allen key to allow this piece to come out. So in order to support the weight, because it's so heavy, and because we didn't want to bury all of this beautiful feldspar and garnet into, again, to the acrylic, we wanted it to float. But in order to do that, because it's so heavy, we needed to create a device to do that. And so they're, like I said, they, they've taken mounting to a whole new level. And so that, you know, this can go in and support itself just like this, and there you go. And then you have the piece easy to display. And you know, I'm not obscuring any of the bottom here. This is an extraordinary example. 
That's cool. Looks good. Good. Go. This is cool. These calcites. I think these are Romanian. I forget where these are from. I think it's by Esprit. I've only seen one or two like this. Actually, I've only seen two like this. The other one is with a collector in California, Conan Barker. Not yeah. Conan Barker. Um, where is it, Conan Barker? Yeah, it's Conan. Yeah. yeah. I've seen one like it, but it was hammered. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> and that was perfect. Yeah. And yeah, these mango quartzes, they are just, you know, they're, they're coming out contemporarily right now, but I think that the best of them, the ones with the, the really strong color and the really great aesthetics, those are gonna be things that are gonna be classics in the future. So, love those. So this you would think might be Arkansas. Mm, what is it, Columbia? But it's Columbia, yeah. yeah, you're right on time. That's fantastic for Columbia. For me, this is this locality rivals the McEarl quartzes that we know from Arkansas, and you know this the the balance of the two crystals there is a spectacular quartz. Not all quartz. Just a little more elongate typically than you get from Arkansas. Just a little bit, yeah. And then this is a really cool dioptase. This is Calcaveld. Calcaveld, yeah, exactly. Great crystal size. And I like the contrast of the, the coating. I didn't want to remove it. You know, you can remove that if I want and just expose more green, but, because it's just a shell, but I think it, I think it gives it. It gives a little more depth. Yeah, gives it contrast it gives and depth. Contrast, yeah. That's a spectacular diaptase. And that's new out of the ground. That's probably within the last, oh, actually, no. It's new to me, but it came out six years ago from someone who held it, who goes there, so. Mm -hmm. It's a great Brazilian tourmaline in the Cruzeiro area, the chameleon pocket. Let's see if we can get the color there. And then I have this. The brother to the one you showed us earlier. Yeah. It's, uh... And this is uh, Peruvian from Ancash, and it's total floater. Mm. And you can see all the little points of quartz growing on the back. Right. And that's a huge tetrahedrite. I'm not sure I've ever seen one that big that was that pretty. Yeah, they're usually, usually not. When they get that big, they get dull, and that's got mm. great luster. And yeah, great form. It's all there. It's all there. Yeah. It's like a total floater. Sapo mine, mm. appetite. That's an extraordinary crystal from there. And this came off of a piece that was the size of the, the vault itself. It probably weighed, you know, three tons. And no one, it came out when the original find came out, which was probably in the early 2000s. And nobody wanted to, to no one knew what to do. And so I bought the boulder, shipped it, MCP did the work, and they took the whole thing apart to hand me back this. So I gave them three tons and they gave me three kilos, <laughs> which is right, I don't even think it's three kilos. It's less. It's, it's probably a better concentration points. ratio than orange juice or maple syrup. There you go. Yeah. There you go. So that's a wonderful appetite. This is from the Conrad mine in Germany. And let's see if you guess the species. You're good, so. Do I get to hold it so I get sure. an idea what the specific sure. animal might be? I'll give you that. That helps. I'll tell you what everyone's first guess is after your first guess. Well, I would guess everybody says either barite or celestine. No one says celestine, but everyone says barite, and it is celestine. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly what it is. And it's an old German celestine. I've never seen another one like it. And the composition. And the pyrite the, dusting. Exactly. Just, that's lovely. Yeah, isn't that great? Just the aesthetics of it, that the way that formed is unique for me. I've never seen anything like it. Even the back, it's like this herringbone sort of crisscrossing. So fun. And so how old a piece is that, do you think? God, this probably has been out of the ground for 75 years easily. Mm. Yeah, it's a really old piece, mm. not new at all. And that's just like from the time frame. And I've never seen another example 
even remotely close. So it was it was exciting to get that. Oh, and yeah, this is for me a spectacular what a combo. Yeah. I've never seen this combo before. Quartz. So you've got the quartz. Quartz, boronite, shelite. Svalorite? Svalorite. And then uh, tucked underneath and then wolframites. Underneath. It's just uh, it's such an unusual combination. I love that. And it's all perfect. It just, I think it was like a floater in the pocket. And the boronite looks like it's crystallographically continuous from one side to the other. Like that was somehow... Oh yeah, you're single right. Single crystal, are completely oriented from one end to the other. Hmm. Like they nucleated and it was growing and it was just interrupted by the quartz. Yeah, or... there might have been something in between that dissolved out later, but it just... That's so cool. Yeah. And then another one from the same mine, which I love. Fluorite on Wolframite. That's oh a beautiful God. little jewel. I love these combination things that come out of there. Yeah, Gonashan just produces so many of those wonderful combos. Yeah. And this, I don't know the mine. I'll have to get it for you later. It's Chinese. Um, it might be Shanghua Pu or Shanghua Ling, where the green fluorites come from. Mm -hmm. But it's a shelite from there on the quartz, which is just so pretty. Beautiful luster. Yeah, great luster. On the quartz and the shelite. A lot of people look at it and go, oh, Powellite. And they're like, no, good, good close. Crystallography's wrong. But... Close relative. Out of, I think these are... Um, gosh, where are these from? Uh, Nepal, I believe. India. They're Indian. Mm. And just one isolated with the phantom. These so are, that's, those are hematite in there? Hematite, little, little, yeah. yeah. You'll see probably a lot of these at the show. There's been some beautiful... They're probably examples. not as nice. We'll see. And beautiful paprock tourmaline with like a microline frozen there or something. I don't know what this is, it's like a feldspar. It looks like one. Yeah. It's a microcline. And one of the new, this has got a good look to it. Green on that's pretty intense. This is Peruvian. Peruvian. Yeah. Just beautiful big green octahedrons with the pyrite. Oh, color on that is sick. Yeah, this is great. And this is, Something as simple as chalcedony, or is it? It's like a chalcedony rose quartz, and it's from Afghanistan. Hmm. So very cool, unusual formation. Color is just complete knockout. Yeah, total, total intensity. It's, it's stronger than the Brazilian stuff for sure. Yeah. The isolation of the one giant cube, the white celeste. I love that, and it glows with those. Root beer colored root phantoms. Beer. Love those. It's one of my favorite discoveries of fluorite because of the contrast between the two. Sadly, the pockets were so hard to collect that most of the celestites got damaged. But, you know, when you find a great one, there's a, a good dozen out there that are outrageous. Mm -hmm. This is cool. So this is uh, a Sumeb mineral. And you don't see many of these. It's chilagite, which is a form of wolfenite, but when you have the, the blue in it. So I don't know if they consider the whole thing chilagite or if it's wolfenite and chilagite, but whenever you have that blue, that's considered to be the species chilagite. And you can see the crystals are like super thick. They are. So for, for that look, even if it's just a wolf and I and that, assume that. That blue is caused by something weird. Is it? It's tin or something strange like that that gives you the blue. Yeah, I've never seen another one even close to this one. It's so fun. The zoning. And then this is an old classic, you know, from Kazakhstan. Blue apatites with the white bertrandite little tucked in blades deep, and the deep purple yeah. octahedral fluorites. Yeah. So fun. There was only one discovery of that. This is cool. This is Kazakhstan. These are blocky hematites? Blocky hematites and quartzes. Wow. This was a new discovery about, I'd say almost a year and a half or two years ago. And the this is one of my favorite ones because of the composition. But I mean, they, this rivals hematite from anywhere on the planet. Swiss or Kavrati or, I mean, Kavrati in, in Switzerland or the stuff from Enschwanning. It looks more like Enschwanning, I think, the blocky well, crystals. the blocky crystals, yeah. yeah. Those other places, they would do Eisenroses more than that style. Right, right. That's 
just for aspect or thickness ratio, I, I can't think of another place with hematite that does that. Yeah. No, this is super cool. Yeah. And for a relatively new discovery. Mm -hmm. And this is unusual. It's, it's a single tourmaline crystal. It's got a beautiful color, pink, but what's unusual is that it's Mozambique. Hmm. And so for, for that location, it's, it's, it's not typical for Mozambique. So that's cool. This is great. I love these Spanish gypsums. Spanish gypsums. And this one is just like, that may be the best one that I've ever had. It's like you hit what you usually see with an enlarging ray. Cause I mean, normally <laughs> you see these little things like this. <laughs> We've been working on that ray for a number of years. Yep. This was our it, first it, example. This, this house is demonstration that it works. That it works. Yes. <laughs> we, it, we, we've been successful at, at making that happen. Watch out, thumbnail collectors. That's, That's it. This is what happens. This is what happens. Send us your thumbnails. And this is great. It's just super elegant. This is Shia Mine. This once came out and belonged to, uh, to Keith Proctor. And it was sold originally as paid in era because we thought it was paid in era. But it actually turns out to be a mine just in that same Safira district in Brazil called Shia, C-H-I-A. And it's just, it's a beautiful composition of the multicolored tourmalines with the pink going to this like sort of grassy green to the blue green and then the slight little cloudy blue at the top that's a great example and what's fun is they they don't actually touch so there's like this finest little sheet of paper that you could slip between the two crystals so i think it's just a very elegant object frustrated for eternity there you go close it's but close but they, they can never touch, touch. This occurred, I was visiting a collector in Italy recently, and he had his whole collection out, and I was sitting there, and this was sitting in the just happenstance, this particular plate, and he collects books and instruments, and this was sitting out in his room, and I'm walking and looking at a whole collection of stuff, and I'm just, I sort of glanced at this quickly, and I went, wait a minute, wait a minute, I was like, I own that. And he was like, no, you don't. And I was like, yeah, no, I, I own that object. I swear. I know it's the piece. And I'm like, and I didn't have the piece where I was. And so then I got home and I went and got it. And there it is. And I mean, you can just see. It's just about it's exactly life size. Isn't that crazy? That, and you know, I don't know what book this is, but I know that it's definitely like turn of the century. So it's probably late 1800s or I don't know that it, it breaks into the 20th century. And so I'm still trying to figure out what book it is because he didn't know what book it was from. We just had the plate and we had like the description that it was, you know, dendritic uh, silver, native silver from Schwarzwald, which is the Black Forest. Mm -hmm. So that gave me now the actual location of this because the person I bought it from told me it was Russian. And that's why I bought it, because I was like, oh, this is a Russian silver. And it turns out it was in a previous collection, and I know some people. What would you like me to do? Put it side by side? Yeah, put it like, on the other side. So it's on this side? There we go. Perfect. How's that? So, I mean, for me, that's something that speaks to the, the history and the, you know, the, the provenance and, like, just how old some of these objects are that we don't take into consideration when we're looking at objects and cases, you just look at them and you're like, oh, they're, there's, they're just, th this just came out. And this is one of those wonderful examples. And I mean, the likeness is so great. Yeah, the artist did a st stunning job. Yeah, for sure. So you haven't asked Herb? You know what, I haven't seen him yet. Okay. I'm going to, absolutely. My guess is Herb takes one look at that and goes, oh, this is- Yeah, this is- Oh yeah, I've got four copies yeah, on my shelf. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, oh, I'll sell you one then. <laughs> Since you have that piece, you need the book and you know. So yeah, I thought that was fun to share with the community because I, I, no, I that, love that's, Provence. That's really cool. That's super fun, yeah. For sure. So when we come back next year, you'll have the copper and the silver. I'm working on the, the I'm working on the silver. I'm going to try and get this gold crystal. I mean, look at this. Gold, I mean, this it's a gold dodec. It's a gold gold dodec. I mean, that's there. This is probably Proustite. I mean, and you know what? At that time, that these like tetrahedrite. This is Proustite. Well, we can see. We can look at the numbers. Uh -huh. So ten. Let's see. No, I guess this is for that plate. Oh wait, no. Okay, here we go. So 13 is tetrahedrite, exactly. Uh, I don't know why they skipped 10. It's weird. Oh. 
Oh, but then it's not in order. Look at that, eight. Eight is cinnabar. cinnabar. Yeah, so that's massive, cinnabar. It's like mostly, well, those are crystals there. Crystals too. in yeah. there. What's 12? 12 is azurite and malachite. Oh, look anything like azurite and malachite, but. Well, it does once you know what it's supposed to be. Yeah, I guess you, you're right, yeah. You wouldn't guess looking at it. So it's super fun. I'm gonna hunt down which book this is. And if I find out, I'll let you know. Herb, if you're watching this. Herb, if you're seeing this. Wait till Danny gets a few of those other pieces, then you can charge him three times more for the book. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Actually, it's Herb who probably has the pieces and is releasing them into the market. I'm hunting them. Let's see what I have in here. This is great. Ooh. This is the best example of these that I have seen by far. By far. Yeah. By far, like leaps and bounds. That is, you know, Demortiorite in quartz on steroids. The color is just outrageous. Compared to the Ahoites or Papagoites, I mean, the Demortiorite is just, for me, superior as an inclusion. The quartz is just so clean and lustrous yeah. that it just, you can yeah, see as a, it. Yeah, you can actually see right down to the base. Mm. Outstanding color. Love that object. That came out a few years ago, and it was the, the number one example from the discovery. Beautiful amethyst from Gogobobaseb. And I like the contrast with the dolomite, that the dolomite is still stained, so it makes a really pretty color. <laughs> and then also, I love these, but I particularly like this for an isolated it's example. Jalagon. It's not. It's, it's not. It's, it's uh, Sakhalovar Sarbai, Kazakhstan. Oh, okay. It's an old, old Russian one, or Kazakh. Call that the rabbit. Just outstanding color. Great electric effect. Great mm -hmm. electric. At least two stages of the malachite replacing the azurite and then the azurite overgrowing that. Yeah, like you said, Milpilis is hard to There's compete nowhere with. else that's put out stuff like no. that. No. Now, Bisbee never did this. No. No. Well, <clears throat> Bisbee had a disadvantage. Bisbee was, Bisbee stayed topographically high. Milpilis' advantage is that 20 million years ago, it was dropped down into what we call a graben. So it was down faulted below the water table. So it couldn't continue to oxidize. Huh. So it stopped, and Bisbee was still above the water table, so groundwater could still infiltrate and damage the crystals. In so some these places. things formed in the first oxidation zone, but then the whole zone, the whole, the whole, the whole deposit was dropped down, dropped down, and preserved twenty million years ago, and then and it was you know found essentially by accident. Oh my uh, god! But uh, that's why everything is so pristine and and pr and so well preserved there. Huh? That's incredible. I didn't know that. And so what's under the oxide zone, the sulfide zone? Sulfides, yeah. You go first into secondary sulfides, so you transition from the what they call the green carbonates from the azurite and malachite down into the cuprite and then down into the chalcocyte zone, and then which is secondary chalcocyte, and then down into the primary chalcopyrite, which wasn't high enough grade to make anybody excited. So it was 0.2%. It, it, it required... At Milpilis. It, at Milpilis. It required that supergene enrichment. Mm -hmm. So are they mining in the those other zones now, or...? It's not high enough grade. It's not high enough no. grade. They think they may have a, a small body of oxide that they can go after again that they found, but it's... Price of copper goes up, it goes down, and mm. it's, it's a big investment to decide to... Whether that to push investment that. ...into going after a little more. This is a really cool appetite from Pakistan. Purple and light, light green with some chlorite. Just unusual morphology for the crystal. It is very. And super transparent. Oh, this is the incredibly phallic malachite, but it's just incredible that these things are standing one by one and they didn't break off or fall in, in formation. And for China, this is an incredible malachite. This one always gets a rise out of people, obviously. Two blue minerals, very different. This aquamarine. And this is Pakistani? Pakistani, Pakistani, yeah. Fantastic geometry. 
Yeah, great modifications. Yeah, and I love on the surface of the termination, you can see, is that better? You can see the, the helicoidal. Yeah, you can see the tubes coming out. Yep. Yep. Oh, yeah. Are you able to get that? Yeah, uh, tilt it towards me a little bit more. Yeah, right there, right there. Isn't that great? That's cool, I've never seen that. That's a wonderful crystal. So is this from anywhere near the, the, the king? The king? No, it's not actually. Well, I mean, as the crow flies, it's nearby. Right. Right. But it's not, it's, a, it's you know, probably. Different valley. Yeah, another couple of kilometers away. Mm -hmm. So, but beautiful example. That area is so rich. It's incredible. That's what I'm going to, well, I don't want to spoiler alert. <laughs> That's original from the, the tree root pocket. Mm -hmm. Great one of those. Love the combo. I love the balance of the, just the alternating smoky quartz and mazonite, smoky quartz and mazonite, smoky quartz. It's a great example for there. Love those. Old one from China. So they just recently hit a new find of these. Um, and this is, I think, Jin Long. Is it Jin Long? I, I can get you the information. I can get you the China part, but beyond that, uh, for that stuff, I, just, I love it, but I don't remember the name. And this was the original discovery, which really had the, the best saturation of red mm -hmm. on the crystals from the hematites. So I love that combo. And this is a wonderful spodumene, oh. that lime green color. Total gem crystal, I love that. So is there a special name for that lime green color? I mean, it's I not really hidden night. It's not really hidden night. I guess it's green, green spodumene. I mean, that's the, the, or I don't know that there's a varietal name for it. So I just call it spodumene, but I love this color. It's got a very unique saturation, different than hidden night and, and different mm -hmm. than, you know, some of the other styles that gets more I think that, color. that that crystal's good enough. You can make up a name for it. You can make up a name for it. I could come up with my own name for yeah, it. Yeah, there you go. That's what I mean. You, it's your rock. You get. The, I get it, to choose. You, yeah, <laughs> go right ahead. It's funny. I the, spoke. The world will thank you. I spoke with someone this morning, and and they were looking at this piece, and they said to me, um, they were like, "Yeah, I like gem crystals, but I'm not a, a single gem crystal guy." Is it, you know, for me, it, my as my wife said, it's. Um, it's jewelry waiting to happen. <laughs> I laughed when he said that. I was like, no, you can't cut the crystal. So this is Yao Gan Shan. Of course. But the twinning of this main twin up here is just stunning. This interpenetrant twin. Mm -hmm. And you have the, you know, the later stage dotting of the pyrites on the surface faces. I love that habit of twinning. And each one is a twin. So for fluorite for there, that's wonderful. I thought of trimming this object actually and taking it down to put more focus on that twin, but I actually, I can't bring myself to do it because it's not, you know, it's one of those things. I would certainly try to talk you out of it. You would? Yes. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> this is cool. I just wanted to show this, this barite from Morocco. Gee, that rivals Frizzington for size. The thickness of the crystals yeah. and the glassiness and this coloration is just so unusual. So I love that. And then this is a great calcite. Elmwood or Sweetwater? Sweetwater. Sweetwater, yeah. Yeah. Just great balance of the, the triple there. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, ah, yeah, this is the one I wanted to show you. I remember I mentioned earlier that there was an appetite. And mm. so this appetite, just look at that color. Rotocrosite red. Yeah, I've never seen that before other than this location in Afghanistan. And it's sitting on a tourmaline crystal. It's not the most beautiful tourmaline crystal, but you know, it's, it's cool that there's the combination. That color for appetite is extraordinary. And then this is nice. This is, I believe this is schispus. Las chispas. Las chispas. Mm -hmm. Beautiful little acanthite. Primary acanthite, no less. 
How can you tell? Terry Wallace measured the crystal face angles very carefully, and you can you can tell you can tell the difference. Really? Huh. That's cool to know. And then this is some beautiful fluorites from Okarusu. Great color, but this is really about this in here. Good old sweet home. Just don't find great sweet homes anymore. They're so hard to get. This was a good luck pocket. Well, anybody who has one doesn't want to let it go. Exactly. And this is new. This is new material coming out of Peru. This is Epidote on quartz. I don't know the locality yet, but great isolation on the quartz. Beautiful specimen. And Navajo pyrites. I mean, I love pyrite from that location. The geometry is just great. And I love this white coating that's on the marl rock. It just makes it stand out a little bit more than most of them. Mm -hmm. And this is cool. This is Moroccan. And it's by far the best example. Chalcosite. Crazy object. For the species, this is one of the great ones in the world. And for the location, it's just, there's the, the next one is like, like a little guy like that. Mm -hmm. So, and then this is my favorite piece and the last piece I'm gonna share this year. This is a, an aquamarine from the Shigar Valley. Mm. And I'll bring this up and out. And it just has a certain presence. I like it this way. So yeah, this is just, it's a spectacular example. I mean, it's almost 17 inches across. It's got beautiful quartz crystals, feldspar crystals. It's got, you know, uh, shoral tourmalines with, with beautiful terminations that have, you know, the, the triple facets. And then it has multi styles of terminations of aquamarine from these bullet terminations to these flat terminations and these long pencils. We call this the pencil pocket. Mm. And I mean, it just, for what this is, is it's just a spectacular thing. The presence of it is just wonderful. It's swimming pool blue. I mean, yeah. it really mm -hmm. is aqua. It really and, is and, aqua. And how complete is this originally? Did this require a lot of reconstruction? No, you this, know, it, it, it looks it, like it's mostly natural. It's mostly natural. Most of the <clears throat> squatter crystals were remained on the matrix. Most of the little guys in here. Obviously, these two have a repair, but it's they're like one lock fit repair at the base. Mm -hmm. So that not a lot of heavy restoration or repair, which is nice. So, and yeah. do you know whether that was the top of the pocket, side of the pocket, that bottom? I don't know. No. Well, I mean, you knew for the king. I knew for the king. <laughs> for the king, we had much more intimate experience. Right. This, unfortunately, we don't have the, the... You just bought this in the market. Oh, we got it in... Well, yeah, we bought an entire pocket that they collected, but uh -huh. it was already collected. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then we worked it. And this piece started off much bigger. It was three times the size. Mm -hmm. There was just all barren area of you know, matrix around it. And so we trimmed it to what made sense and consolidated it and cleaned it. And there you are. I really like the differences in the terminations. Yeah. And you see too. such different terminations right next to each other. Mm -hmm. So there you have it. That's what's hot in Tucson. All right. Well, what's Thanks. scorching in Tucson. I like it, Daniel. <laughs> Thank you. That's so cool.